Hello everyone, Vulcan here, and today I'm going to be bringing you another prediction video. Although having said that, I'll also be talking about what I hope to see happening in Volume 5 in this video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. To begin with, let's summarize how Volume 4 ended. The fight with the Nakalavi ended with Bren getting revenge for the death of his parents and the destruction of his home. Getting that in his birth village was also quite the nice poetic touch, looking at it in hindsight. Ranger was then rescued by some patrol ships and taken to Mistral, where Crow was thankfully able to get the medical attention he desperately needed. On top of that, we found out that the rest of Team Ruby is on the way there, with Y supposedly making her way to see her sister, who is confirmed to be there thanks to the conversation between Jacques and Ironwood. Yang is also on the way there with knowledge that her sister is likely to be there, unlike the rest of Team Ruby. Blake also seems to be setting her sights on Mistral as she aims to reform the White Fang. Last but not least, Oscar made his way to Mistral and has met up with Crow, who gave him Ospin's cane. Having said that, I think it's pretty safe to assume that at some point in the volume, all of Team Ruby will be reunited. I expect Yang will be the first one there, and the first first one to meet up with Ruby considering that at the end of volume 4 she was right at the crossroad leading to either Mistral or Kuro Yuri. It is possible that Weiss is also quite close, but given that we weren't given any kind of indication of exactly where she was in her last appearance such as a landmark, there's no real way to tell how close she is. On top of that, meeting up with Ruby isn't her main objective as she wouldn't know she's also there to begin with. Blake will likely be the last member of the team to rendezvous with the rest, given that she was still in Menagerie at the end of the volume. These are of course all things that many have already speculated. In this video I want to cover three things that particularly interest me in terms of what I think we can expect in the next volume. Insight on Professor Lionheart and his objective, Ruby and how her team will reunite, and most importantly Oscar. To start things off let's talk about Professor Lionheart. Based on what we saw at the end of the volume, we know that he is conspiring with Salem's group to bring down the current system for training hunters and huntresses. What I find most curious to think about is what could be motivating Professor Lionheart to work with Salem when he's one of the people who Ospin presumably put his trust in. One could say that having seen what happened to Vale and therefore Ospin, he doesn't want the same tragedy to happen again and may be trying to negotiate with Salem to ensure the well-being of Haven and its students, possibly using the relic that is likely hidden in Haven as a bargaining chip. Another option is that he could be tired of the way the system works himself and thinks that whatever Salem plans to bring will mean humans no longer have to fight. Which could be true considering Salem likely wants to undo everything that the God of Light has done, and part of that is the very existence of humanity. Aside from that, I cannot think of a good reason why the Headmaster would be willing to destroy his own academy unless he's also perhaps one of Salem's henchmen. After all, in the first episode of Volume 4, two seats had remained empty. However, I still don't think that Lionheart is one of them because the brief altercation we got between him and Evil Obi-Wan doesn't imply that the two know each other. If Lionheart was a spy, I'd expect Evil Obi-Wan wouldn't have spoken to him as if he were a stranger. At any rate, it'll be very very interesting to see what his goal is and why he's working with Salem. Moving on to Ruby, the thing to remember is that she is still being hunted by Salem and two of her direct underlings are now in the same place as her, or at least close enough. We know that evil Obi-Wan is at Haven, which is in Mistral. Hazel on the other hand is meant to be meeting with Adam. However, this means that he's more likely to square off with Blake in her journey to reform the White Fang. From that, I think it's a safe assumption that like Tyrion was Volume 4's mini-boss for Ruby, so to speak, Volume 5's mini-boss will be none other than Watts. I don't expect them to square off right away in the volume as I don't expect Watts to know Ruby's in Mistral, at least not until someone informs him or he spots Ruby himself. Ruby's objective for getting to Mistral has been rather unclear in the beginning as she set up apparently to face the people responsible for destroying Beacon, whoever they may be. Now that she's there, a sensible next step for her would be to see Lionheart, something I think Ranger said they would do anyways. It is in that moment that I think Watts will spot Ruby, realizing it's her by her silver eyes, because after all, Watts doesn't know what Ruby looks like. Hopefully then, if and when Ranger faces off with Watts, we'll also find out more about what makes John stand out as much as, if not more than Silver Ride warriors. I expect that Ruby will meet Yang either just before or right after Ranger meets with Lionheart. At any rate, I think it's going to be pretty early in the volume that Yang will meet up with Ruby. Weiss on the other hand is on her way there to meet up with Winter. How Weiss will end up meeting with Ruby depends on a lot of factors, meaning there's no way of really telling what's going to go down. One possibility I do think is likely, however, is that when the fight breaks out between Ranger and Yang against Watts, it'll cause enough of a commotion to attract Winter and therefore Weiss, allowing for her to reunite with Ruby. With so many adversaries, I think it'll give Watts the reason to retreat. Even if his opponents are leagues below him, likely safe for Winter and definitely safe for Crow, he will be far too outnumbered. This leaves us with Blake and how she is set to reunite. So far, her objective wouldn't necessarily place her anywhere close to the rest of Team Ruby, although if we go by the fact that both Oscar and Hazel were at the same station, chances are that their destinations were close 
close by. Given the White Fang's involvement in the fall of Beacon, I also wouldn't think it unrealistic that Adam's faction is also hiding out in the main city like they were hiding in Vale before the event. That said, I expect that for most of the volume, Blake's side of the story will be independent of the rest of Team Ruby until close to the end when it becomes clear who they need to face. Assuming Lionheart has a change of heart. Get it? Because heart's in his name? I'll just... Leave the puns to best girl. Through him, we find out that the White Fang is operating there, which may incite Ranger, Yang, and Weiss to go after them. Yang herself is gonna have a bone to pick with Adam for taking her arm and causing Blake to run away, so that may be a very interesting fight. Finding the White Fang, however, they also find that Hazel is with Adam, meaning we'll get an even more interesting fight at the end of the volume. One thing that really excites me is seeing Hazel fight, because after what he did to the ticket machine at the station, I really want to see what he can do. Even more so than Watts, as a matter of fact. How much room this leads for character resolution between Yang and Blake is up for debate though, but I don't expect there to be a sad ending with all this conflict set to take place in the volume. Last but not least, I really want to know what Oscar's deal is. In the last volume, I made it pretty clear that I wasn't too impressed with the way his character was handled. For all intents and purposes, he was treated as a side character when the nature of his role should place him at least alongside Team Ruby in terms of importance. So hopefully we get to know what motivated Oscar to go from thinking he's going insane to trusting that voice in his head. I also want to know what his relationship relationship with Ospin is and whether or not he's a voice that will eventually fade away once his memories completely merge with Oscars, or if he'll be similar to what Roku was to Aang in The Last Airbender, that being a figure that can be summoned at will when he's needed. There's various other little things that I hope to see in Volume 5 as well, particularly Neo as it's been long enough since we got any news about her fate. Personally, I think she's still alive and possibly working with whatever criminal organization exists in Mistral, or maybe she's also still working for Cinder. Like Roman, I see her as the type to align herself with whoever she thinks is the strongest for the sake of her own survival, but I guess we'll see. So let me know what you expect to happen and also what you hope to see in the next volume. As always, like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel to see more of this. I hope to see you again soon and have a great day.